Yes, hello again, everyone. This is Click, and I'm Gareth Mitchell. Today, how fast is your internet? Are you on slow old dial-up, or are you like our listener Tony Harding in Hong Kong, who says he gets 100 megabits per second, and he could have a gig via fibre if he really wanted it? Yes, today, this is a special edition looking at connectivity. Later, a perspective from Nairobi, but first here to a remote hillside in the north of England, where a community has been taking connectivity into its own hands. Now, Bill Thompson, expert Bill Thompson, knows a little bit about this. First of all, just set the scene for us, Bill. Where are we? Well, we're in the Loon Valley in, in beautiful Lancashire. We're not far from the city of Lancaster, but we're in a farm, in a field, with a trench. I ruptured a disc all oh, three years ago. Bending isn't great, but I can twist all right. Now, the trench is all related to a community project called Barn, and John Hamlet can tell me a little bit more about it. What is Barn? What does that mean? Um, Barn's a community broadband project where we're putting in fibre, but unlike a lot of other projects, the fibre's going all the way to the home, and everyone's getting a full fibre, so it's going to be a gigabit of speed for each household. So, John, why don't you just wait for your local telco provider to come and give you a nice, I don't know, big, fat 100 megabits per second? BT, obviously, are doing stuff around Cumbria and um, Lancashire, but they're not getting out to the very rural areas like us. The telecoms companies can't afford to do what we're doing. Mm. Barn, apparently, we're being able to dig in because we're basically volunteers using materials, and that's our main cost. We're basically able to dig a metre of fibre in for about five pounds a metre, and someone like BT, apparently, more like 140 pounds a metre. Right, so, so BT, that's obviously one of the, the telecoms providers here, and I know it serves this, this region. So the physicality of it is, as we can see, in this field, we are standing in front of a trench, and it is a long, narrow trench. It goes down about 60 centimetres into the ground. I'm George Metcalf. I have the easy bit. I dig the trench. They put the cable in and do everything. You know, put the soil in, make sure the cable's right. We are struggling a little bit for volunteers. It's mainly people with time on the hands, and let's face it, not everybody has time. But at weekends, we usually get a good turnout. And at the bottom of this trench, we can see a bundle of orange cables. This is fibre optic down here, then, is it? What it is at the moment, we're just putting in the duct. So this is an empty uh, HDPE orange duct. We've got 16 mil ducts, which take um, ooh, up to 192 fibres. That 192 fibres can obviously service 192 homes. What we're doing with Barn is sending two fibres to every home, so there's a, a spare fibre in case there's damage or in case anybody builds a granny flat one day or whatever. We've also got in this trench some 7 mil ducts, and they are the individual ducts that go to the individual houses. Right, so, so it seems, first of all then, Bill, that they're putting in the pipes. These are the ducts, and then ultimately that, that delicate but very high-capacity uh, fibre will then run through the ducts. Yeah, this is building infrastructure. So literally it is laying a trail across the countryside from yeah, a place where you can do backhaul onto you know, the high-speed public internet so that you have individual fibre optic cables going into every property that wants to sign up for it. And it's, it's physical work, it's labour, it's digging a trench, it's putting the, the ducting in, and then of course the crucial point is getting the fibre optics into the ducting because yeah, they are at the moment empty. You need to blow the fibre down them. So yeah, this is hard. This is Oh, this is this is what the internet really is. You know, in the end, the internet is all of these networks connected together, and it's very easy for us to forget that it relies on this physical connectivity. So what we're seeing with Barn is really you know, people actually building it for themselves, and I suspect the people who get involved as volunteers, the people who are involved in the project, feel a real sense of achievement, obviously for having done it, but also understand how the internet works in a way that those of us who can just phone up a telco and say, "Please, could you turn me on?" don't. So, so, yeah, it's a re really uh, on the ground. This is what the internet is. Tell us a bit about your day job then, John, and, and what kind of a difference the connectivity will make to you with what you do. I've always worked from this village. Um, I've lived here for oh, 10, 15 years, something like that. And um, I do uh, video production and media. And uh, often, you know, there's a very large file sizes to upload, especially with video. Now, downloading's not too bad. Uploading, though, is about a tenth the speed over ADSL, which is what we have here at the moment. I had a... A very large file recently I had to upload. It was taking 12, 13 hours to upload over, over my current connection. Went to the local village where they've got this already. Went to see a friend of mine. He uploaded it in six minutes. So from Gressingham here to a village called Dolphin Home. And uh, Alan Norris is here. We are actually standing in this lovely garden of your house. They told me in my briefing notes that we were going to meet a guy called Alan who is an activist. And... 
standing here looking at you in this lovely home, wearing a nice fleecy, there's something of the activist about you, but you're not quite what I was expecting. Tell me a bit about your broadband uh, activism. In this village, we have been a pretty independent bunch generally, and we got together and to try and complain about the speeds of the broadband services that we were receiving. We became aware that Barn Initiative was, was taking off. So with a number of friends, I set up the Dolphin Home Barn Action Group. We've begun to discuss with our neighbours potential routes to bring the broadband system here. Our nearest larger village is Abbeystead, which is just a couple of miles away. And the system is already now active in Abbeystead. So we have a, a route planned from Abbeystead through Greenbank, which is the small village adjacent to us, into Dolphin Home. And we have landowners along that route who have agreed not only to allow barn to cross their land, but in many cases they've agreed to actually dig the trenches that are necessary. We have some technical complications in the village. We have a very steep hill down to a river and we have to find a way across the river. That's a challenge in its own right. Uh, we have a number of small roads to cross and we've always got the problem that we have uh, a number of absentee uh, householders etc. So we've got quite a long way to go but we've made a great deal of progress. Why are you going for cable? I, I assume it's, it's to do with broadband but uh, wireless for instance you could have WiMAX, LTE um, in a previous life I used to help put in microwave networks for quite a large provider so why don't you just do it wirelessly? In this area we are very poorly served by things like mobile phone connections so people have got very little faith in those sorts of systems of course, the other thing is what you're putting in the ground from the farmer's point of view is a relatively simple cable carrying light. They don't have to worry about electricity. They don't have to worry about, you know, microwaves and all the things that might frighten people. It's an easier sell from that perspective. Fibre is the future, really. Uh, the fact is we know we'll continue to be able to increase the speed with which we can send bits down fibre optic for a long time. And, of course, what Barnes putting in, as, as Alan said, is ducting. You can actually put more cables down there a lot more easily than you can get extra bandwidth in an increasingly contested spectrum. When if you've got your own ducting, then you're secure for the next 20, 50, 100 years. And then do you anticipate, Alan, if, if all goes to plan, that it will end up with a kind of snowball effect? I think it'll snowball in terms of people wanting the uptake. Now, one of the great things about Barn is because we're building it ourselves, ultimately, the people in this community will own it. If they need assistance, it'll be being provided locally by people that they know. That's actually quite a big positive. It, it has a great advantage. So that was uh, Alan Norris, uh, who is looking forward, if all goes well, to having some uh, faster downloads within the next year or so. Now, one person who is very happy because those fast speeds have arrived is Pat Close, uh, who has also been part of the Barn uh, Project. Pat runs a farm. We're in an absolutely beautiful setting here. We're in your dining room, Pat, and uh, as of the last week and a half, you have been connected to what we're told is super fast broadband. Can you show us how fast? You have speed tests set up on the PC here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we've connected to a server. It's actually in Amsterdam, and it's doing a speed test. And you can see it now showing the download speed coming up 548, 550. This is 600 megabits per second. This is not 600K. <laughs> I can't believe I see <laughs> I mean, This is just astonishing. This, this is better connectivity than most offices in central London would have. I notice uh, that your desk is full of papers and full of floppy disks. So do you still use floppy disks in the business? We've had to until recently because every month we do our milk recording and the milk recorder takes the data away, loads it up onto the central database and then they send us our copy back for our records until recently we couldn't download them directly so every month they had to send us a floppy disk with our uh, milk recording results on it. It's so easy to forget especially for people who live in the cities that even in a supposedly rich and developed country like the UK that, that there are still people like yourself who up until two weeks ago just had dial-up. And uh, we've had our listener, Owen Fish, who works for an American ISP. And uh, he's been telling us on our Facebook group that he still gets calls from a lot of people in the USA who are on dial-up modems. David Malik says, here in Italy, we're in a mountainous region. We have a maximum uh, speed of 80 kilobits 
per second. But I'm, I'm assuming that it is just down to economics. Wherever you are in, in the world, if it's not kind of viable for one of the big providers to come and put a load of fibre in, of course they're not going to do it. There is also a lot of politics in this as well, though. If you look at the history of telecommunications, you know, over the past 100 years, in many countries there were incumbent operators who started off as telephone companies, even telegraph companies became telephone companies, have turned into internet service providers. There are lots of interests around the provision of access and high-speed access that you're not necessarily aware of, but that can block progress. One of the things about the the Barn Initiative and what they're doing is they're basically saying, if it wasn't about the money, what would we do? Well, we'd just do it for ourselves. And they found a way by working with farmers, by digging trenches for themselves, by laying their own fibre, to do it for themselves and cut out a whole swathe of regulation and, and policy making and all those things and just, just actually you know, get into the ground and lay the fibre. And that, for me, is an interesting model because we're looking at you know, the north of um, the United Kingdom, of, of England. It is, as you said, a developed country. You know, this is a first-world problem, but the solutions here are generalisable. What technologies exist, what methods exist to cut through any red tape, to cut through any problems and help people to solve this problem for themselves? And I think that's an issue which matters to the whole world. We are, it has to be said, in the sticks. This is a remote part of the world. How much of an improvement is this compared to what you had before? Well, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, we've gone from uh, dial up at 42 kilobytes <laughs> to uh, this at uh, 600 megabytes. So uh, it's made uh, doing our business much easier because we can now download things, we can connect immediately instead of uh, having to go away and make a cup of tea or something while the site's loading. It makes us feel part of the 21st century, I suppose. Pat Close, a happy and a much more connected farmer here in the north of England, bringing an end to this special edition on the subject of connectivity here on Click. Well, I'm Gareth Mitchell. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.